poultry farm. Um, we do eggs and meat. The, uh, the farm we are on is here. We have four sons. And at this point, my oldest son and I, Kelly, uh, run the farm by ourselves. Uh, the rest of them have gone their way. My husband is um, our weekend tractor man because he has a real job or another job. Um, we are on just less than 10 acres and we use eight acres for pasturing the hens. Plus we have um, fruiting mulberries. So um, the fruit, when it drops, the girls get extra treats. Um, we can also sell those. Um, pastured poultry is, um, can be mobile coops or it could be stationary. We've tried both. We are stationary. Um, we also have, um, we basically have six housings, which are basically a carport. So they have coverage, they have blockage from the elements, but there are no doors. They are free to go. That's pastured poultry. They are out on pasture. Uh, we have two brooders because we get day old chicks and we raise all of our um, birds from day old chicks from hatcheries. Um, for us to do it ourselves would be a nightmare. Um, we do sell at farmers markets. We do three to four every week. And we have tried stores, we have tried restaurants. That was interesting, but we really enjoy our farmers market. So that's sort of the overall description of our business. Um, how we got started, we've been here 32 years, like I explained with, you know, when we had one or two little tykes like she does, Marissa. Um, so the only relation I have with farming is my grandfather was a farmer in Wisconsin, but it's always sort of been in my blood, but believe it or not, I became a critical care nurse. Um, and I did that while we owned the land and I've sort of, I worked for as a nurse for 19 years and then I crossed over about seven of those years with farming and um, decided to stay with farming. Um, so how I started out is we were doing culinary herbs, tomatoes, peppers, we were doing market crops and then we brought in chickens and the chickens seemed to be fun. They also were more profitable. Um, so we decided to do, to focus on poultry for the whole um, business. Um, last year we started with meat birds. Um, that's a whole new adventure. Um, so processing is part of our work. Um, and what our next step will be is value added. So we're trying to do some bone broths and pickled eggs and things like that, just because you wanna utilize everything you have um, on the farm so that there's no waste. Um, we pretty much follow focus um, ideas, questions, inquiries from our customers. So that's where we sort of keep building on what we do. Day-to-day um, -day experience, when you do livestock, it's seven days a week, 24 seven, all year long. So it's um, crops, you know, you, you grow those, you can put them to bed for a while. Um, yeah, these guys, you gotta feed them and water them every day. You have to clean every day. Um, so we have laying hens, we have approximately, and we're on a low count right now, but we have about 1200 laying hens and about 400 meat birds and our day is getting up, making sure all their waters are clean and fresh because they like to walk in it. They like to poop in it. They poop everywhere. So, um, see you later. So the watering, we feed, um, we collect every day, and then we wash the eggs and box them. And we do put them in refrigeration because that's sort of the regulation that we have to follow to sell. But also we get so hot here in Brentwood that we tried leaving them out and they, they sort of started cooking and sort of uh, exploding. So um, <clears throat> the other thing is the brooder. We always have babies in the brooder. That a brooder is a, um, a room that is insulated. It's heated um, depending on how old they are. So we get day old chicks. Um, and we try and keep them at about 95 degrees for the first two weeks till they feather out. And then they get moved to a little cooler room, room, and then they're out. So um, we usually have about 200 to 500 chicks brooding at one time. And all of that is hand 
um, take because so out in the fields we have continuous waters. We also have big feeders for the for our um, supplemental feed, which we um, custom blend besides what we have out in the pasture. So we, we take out all the corn, we take out the soy, we take out the fillers. They like putting rice holes in to the feed that we're paying for that does them no nutritional good. So we use barley as our protein and it has a nice high protein level to it. Um, we get non-GMO, so we're able to keep everything you know, clean, everything's clean. Uh, so the meat birds are the same, but we do have to, um, excuse me, the brooder. So the brooders, we have to hand fill the waters every day and feed them. So everything, you have to get all those containers cleaned every day for babies, just because they have a you know, possibility of eating their own poop, sorry. But it's, it's a true thing. <laughs> um, the meat birds, uh, when they get of age, um, we use Cornish hens. And um, at about eight to 10 weeks, we process and we go to a state certified facility. We don't do it on the farm because of um, just basically they have all the equipment. It's, it's expensive to set up. Um, so they, they get processed and then there's uh, the side where we do all the cleaning and, and all the packaging. Um, and that's just basically putting them in ice for 24 hours. And then we take them home and the next day we, we clean them again and uh, do a shrink wrap bag on them and label them for market the next day. Um, farm chores, they're, it, it's, they're always there. Um, the feeding, the watering, we irrigate the pasture, uh, clean out the housing. Um, twice a year we try and get the tractor in there and pull out probably, it's probably got to be 20 yards of poop and soil. Once we get that cleaned out, we bring in wood chips so that with their poop, they sort of make a litter. And um, so that's what we bring out. Then we put that in a compost pile to let it sit for six months because uh, chicken manure is very hot or high in nitrogen. So we let that sit, we compost it, and then we respread it on our own pasture. So no chemicals on our field for 30 years. Uh, we do not treat our, our birds with antibiotics that, you know, people are worried about that. If they get hit, hit sick or hurt, we treat them. We have our own little hospital um, and we have to decide if they go back into the flock or not. Um, if they cannot go back in the flock, um, we sort of have to do the end process and put them down. Uh, so besides being outside working, we have to order supplies, we have to order the feed, we have a silo that has to get filled about every 10 days with three tons of feed, and that's supplemental. Um, bookkeeping, uh, which is a nightmare because I'm not a numbers person. Uh, the other part of farming is you have outside uh, sources of problems, and those are predators. Um, what we've done is just at the beginning of this year, we got two livestock um, guardian dogs. They are great Pyrenees. They're seven months old. They're hilarious. They're huge. They're both about 80 pounds already. Um, so we got those to um, push and keep the coyotes at bay. And we have not had a kill since we've had the pups, even though we only let them out during the day right now because we are training them not to play with the chickens. Um, so our sustainable practices are animal welfare, making sure that the animals have a natural, healthy life, which is pasture raised. They're able to go out there and scratch and peck. They eat the grasses. The we have a combination of grasses out there. They eat bugs. Uh, after a rain, they get a lot of worms. Um, the livestock guardian dogs are a sustainable um, avenue just because we are not having to destroy animals that are killing our animals. So we just persuade them to go somewhere else. Um, we rotate our hens. We keep them for three and a half years. Um, and then they get pulled out, removed from the flock, and they become stewing birds. So they're, every part is used at all times. Um, health soil, um, healthy soil is something that we're constantly working on. And that's with um, adding whatever nutrients after soil testing is done. 
Um, the composting that we get from the manure um, gets tested and, and sent back out. So that is something that we've never had to bring in any kind of fertilizer. Uh, the positive impact on the local community, farming without chemicals, huge. Um, animal welfare, people can drive by our farm and see that the girls are outside, you know, wandering, doing their normal thing. Uh, providing healthy local food and it's fresh. Uh, we, it's hard to hard boil our eggs because they're so fresh, they don't peel well. When you get your eggs from the supermarket, you can peel them really easy because they've been probably sitting there three to four weeks. Um, so our big thing is they're fresh, they're delicious, they're healthy because whatever the birds are eating, you get the benefit from that. Uh, educating the customers at market. Uh, it's, you know, for everyone thinks that past, or excuse me, free range and cage free is what pasture raised is. The labels on just one simple item like an egg is amazing. So free range is in a barn. They're not in a cage, they're in a barn, there's a door if they wanna go out. But if you know chickens, you have to have one that goes out for someone to follow. So, and they've usually, if there's a side yard, it, there's no green at all because they'll eat it very quickly. So educating people to know that the eggs that are coming that they're buying are coming from hens that are outside actually eating different types of nutrition. And, you know, we support each other at the farmer's market. We support small farming, you know. Factory farming is not good for us. It's, it just doesn't, uh, it's not sustainable, but although it's showing it is, but it also kills out the small farms. So um, making sure that we support the local farms is, is a huge thing. So I've sort of hit your highlights. I hope I didn't ramble. Um, what would you, if you want me to expand on anything or questions, how do you want to do this? Uh, I, think, I think at this point, we'd like to take some questions from the kids. Is there anyone with a question? I know we have a long list of people here. If you want to unmute and ask your question of Shelly. Well, what farmer's markets are you at? We do Castro in the city. Uh, we do Pleasanton and Inner Sunset in the city. And then our fourth one is Urban Village in Oakland. So you know where we can get it out here in Contra Costa? Pleasanton, well, that's Alameda, right? We, we do. We have been starting um, farm pickups, but it's it's a little bit of a challenge because we actually have to make sure the pups are put away and people show up to get them. Um, yeah, stopping by. We, we used to do Brentwood Market, but we, we didn't have, um, it, it wasn't, that wasn't profitable for us. Do you supply restaurants? We used to, we used to, we did um, NOPA, in San Francisco, um, we did, what was it called? Star, Star Belly, something like that. We did two restaurants and we did great, but the, the volume they needed for our small farm, we couldn't keep up. We also did two stores, uh, whole food stores. We drop off on Monday, they were gone on Tuesday and no one would call us. So we got a lot of angry emails. <laughs> What is the price of a uh, chicken comparatively to, like chicken and eggs compared to what, um, what Whole Foods does with organic and such? What is your price point? My price point for a dozen large eggs is eight. And for a whole chicken, they're seven fifty a pound. And we run them between two and a half to three and a half pounds. And then what we do, so, you know, getting into sort of the processing, we we take off the feet, we take off the head. I hope this isn't gross anyone out. Um, we discard the head because no one has ever asked for them yet. Um, but we do keep the feet because people make bone broth out of it. We keep the liver, the heart, and the gizzard. So um, we sell those separately. And people that want those can, can buy them. We put them in, you know, like half a pound or something like that. 
it looks like we have two questions from students that put them in the chat if you don't mind me asking them the the first one was what is your biggest obstacle um until we got the pops the biggest obstacle was neighbors dogs um we we had you go out there and it it was terrible we go out there and they had jumped the fence and killed 50 60 birds for fun so now that we've got the pups that's also has been very you know uh, deterrent for them um the uh, the other thing is just being able to to get supplies when you're a small farm you know, everyone wants you to get all this big bolt and it's it's hard thank you for that the other question was how many years of experience do you need to sell poultry to the public i, I don't know if it's necessarily years i think you you sort of need to know um you know you need to know how to raise them so i don't have school education for for farming, but I did a lot of reading. I've read for forever on this. And basically you need to know um, how to keep your hens healthy. Um, you need to know how to get them processed properly. Where we go, we have our eyes on our birds the whole way through. At other facilities, they take your birds, they disappear behind the door and they come back. So you don't know if you're getting your birds back. You don't know how they've been treated. And that animal welfare is very big with us. So, you know, I would, if someone's going to start this, I would start small, make your mistakes when you have a small amount, and I've made a lot of them, um, but know, know what you're, you're working towards. And if you want to do meat birds, you know, try out different breeds, try out different uh, hatcheries or wherever you want to get, hatcheries are the best because you can, you can make sure that they are um, a clean hatchery. They are, they are certified for making sure they have no bacteria, and that's huge. But I, you know, a couple of years under your belt before you start selling meat, I think would be wise. That's great advice, thank you. And that was actually a really good segue to the next question, which is why, why Cornish game hens? What's the difference between a standard store-bought piece of poultry and the Cornish hen breed? Well, what you see in store-bought is called a Cornish cross. Um, you don't get the normal heritage breeds. We tried a group of heritage and they were great. It took 16 weeks to grow them to, to processing size, but they were a little tough because they do grow for four months and wander around. Um, so when you have what I call the factory farm, they don't even let them roam. They're, they're in the housing, they stay there so they don't walk around so that the meat is more tender. But if you use a Cornish cross, it's a shorter, like I said, you know, six, eight, 10 weeks, depending on, but we don't use the cross. We don't use the hybrid that grows. We, we tried them once, it was gross. They grew so fast they couldn't walk. Um, so the Cornish hen is just what everyone thinks is this little thing you get at a nice restaurant. You just, we let them go a little further. We get them to two and a half, three and a half pounds. They're perfectly fine. They fly up on things. They, you know, they get, but they're, they're stocky birds. Their meat is evenly distributed. So when you process, you've got a nice compact bird and they're really tender and they're delicious. Thank you for that. And actually this one's for me, just like when people aren't familiar, like I love Cornish hen. But if people aren't familiar with Cornish hen, do you have any problems with like customer like recognition of those things to get them to try those birds? Usually when they look at it, they just assume this is what every bird looks like. So we tell them it's a Cornish hen and that we've raised it. We've raised it out probably three weeks more than what you would get maybe at a restaurant so that they're a little little more beefy. They're on a high protein diet because they grow so fast. So, um, and people, as soon as they try them, they're sold. Right now we haven't done the first process this year because we couldn't get the chicks because we get these chicks from 
um, Iowa and they couldn't ship because of the freeze. So we have, we have people clamoring for the birds right now. So once they've tasted them, they know what a good chicken tastes like. Thank you for that. And we had another, I, I don't know how long we had set aside for questions, but we had another student question, which is why did you choose to take this path? You're originally a nurse and now you're a chicken farmer. What, what led you to that? It's a little weird, I know. <laughs> um, so going back to my grandfather's farm, it, it felt right, it felt great. And as a little girl, if, don't laugh at me, I said, I'm either gonna be a nurse or I'm gonna be a farmer's wife. Don't know why, but I went the path of nursing. I enjoyed it, I did well, but then I got injured and it really was sort of tough for me to work. Not that this isn't physical, this is more physically demanding, but I'm not picking up ill people. I'm not treating to where, you know, if I can't handle it, I don't want to jeopardize them. So when this, when I started this, I crossed over about seven years. Um, and I love this. And, you know, working with my, all my kids have shovel poop. They've, they've, you know, chased chickens. They've done all that. So it was a good way for them to also grow up. But it just, it, it feels good. It's a nice accomplishment. And I, I like this lifestyle. Thank you for that. Marissa, how, how much longer did we have set aside for Q&A? Um, I think it's time that we move on to Nazi, but thank you so much, Shelly, for talking about your chickens and, uh, and letting us know a little bit more about that process. Um, next up, we have Nazi, who is the, uh, the owner of Bolani Breads in uh they manufacture in Concord and they sell throughout the farmers markets uh and i'm gonna let her talk to you a little bit about how she got started and uh and her career path utilizing the farmers market as a as a place to sell and also connect with her community nazi that's right hi uh, my name is nazi um i'm founder of balani and I came, I'm originally from Afghanistan. I was 15 when I um, came to Land of Opportunity US in New York when a war started in Afghanistan. And in the street of New York, um, a girl, um, 15 years old, I didn't have a quarter to go to a bus with a different language and different culture and everything started in, uh, in there. And uh, I went to school in New York and uh, we live in, in Queen. And I married from um, in New York and my husband, family, my mother-in-law is Russian, Ukraine. And then uh, we stay in New York for, for a while. My husband wanted to be a doctor in University of Rochester, but we couldn't afford to do that. Uh, so we moved, to, we came into California um, we fall in love with California. We wanted to stay in California. So um, then um, I work in my lifetime. Um, sorry. Um, I uh, work seven days as a um, woman with four kids um, in uh, uh, seven days. And you guys are going to say, why seven days? Because I work Monday to Friday. And I used to, my first job was um, a manager of Burger King. And then uh, I went to school and I work in, in the farmer market before my business in the farmer market selling ravioli and pasta in Walnut Creek in Pleasanton. And my son, uh, Bill, uh, which his na full name is Bilal, he was with me in the farmer market. I took him. Um, uh, he was seven years old. I took him to the farmer market. He didn't want to wake up on Saturday. And I said, what about farmer market croissant, chocolate croissant in farmer market? So he got exciting. He wake up. He, we went to the farmer market um, and we sold there and he worked with a farmer and got some money and, and, and he worked with me and I gave him the end of the day um, $10. 
And then my daughter, I took him, my daughter went to the farmer market and put a small little stand and did the face painting. And uh, um, he put a little thing. So my kids work with me in the farmer market. And then I looked around how I, my business is start. I look around in the farmer market. I said, why every food is here, but not Afghani food? Ravioli is here, tamale is here, samosa Indian is, uh, food is here. Well, what should I bring to, to make it beautiful and successful Afghani food? Because we're popular with meat, with uh, rice and lamb and kebab. And, and I said, um, I remember my, I'm from, northern Afghanistan. My family, my father family came from Russia. Afghanistan and Russia is border. Uh, they live in northern Afghanistan. And my grandmother, I learned Balani brat recipe from my grandmother. When I was nine years old, my grandmother went to the garden, cut the spinach, the vegetable, and made this brat in a clay oven. Handmade brat, stretch it, filled it up, baked it in a clay oven. And I remember I was watching her and I learned this recipe from my grandmother. And I said, I'm going to bring bologna. And then I, I did. Uh, so well, when that time, my husband was going to school to be a chemical engineer. And he said, no, no, we're gonna, not going to do business. But in 2003, when he, he graduated from San Jose State, and he had a job in Silicon Valley as a chemical engineer, and the engineering computer, uh, computer business fell down at that time. And that time, I looked at him, and I said, we're going to do business. I'm going to bring Bolani to to the people up here and show them what we have. So we started in the farmer market. My first farmer market was Marin Civic Center. And uh, I went there and, and two, it was me, my son Bilal and my husband, we all three went there. And, and believe me, I put a stand and I didn't even Bolani pack at that time. So I put it like in a tray, in a cupboard in a tray, and with my sauces, and I took it there. And when I gave a sample to people, they, they didn't even ask how much. It was, okay, give me what, what you gave me. This, 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 this. I looked at my husband. I said, I sold ravioli. I sold samosa. I sold tamale in the farmer market. This is going to be great. This, in two hours, we sold out in the farmer market the popularity of my business to start there. So one farmer market become uh, two, two become 10. We become like in 50, 60 farmer market and we were selling out in farmer market and, um, and then that's it. That's popularity went in, on and on and on. And um, we sold in farmer market. We love to sell in farmer market uh, we want to be in farmer market. There was a time uh, that we went to, uh, to store and the store loves that product, but I pull it out. In 2015, I, um, my health went a little bit not good. I got colon cancer, so I wasn't at that great shape. And then I, and also I wasn't my profitability and the way I sell and I couldn't afford um, store. So I pull out and I'm only selling in farmer market in some local store and that's it. So um, this is how uh, my life started and, and um, this is what Bolani. And about Bolani brat is a very thin brat. Uh, it's filling with um, uh, vegetable, it's vegan, is um, uh, no chemical, is nutritious and delicious. <laughs> I'm sure you guys know this brat. And um, we bake it, uh, and the concept is like a clay oven, but it's a bigger oven. And the same concept is handmade. Uh, the popular, uh, the, the making this product is from local, um, uh, we deal with a lot of farmer and local farmer, farm fresh to you, KP farm. We get a lot of ingredients from them. Uh, we get Mosey Farm. Um, all our ingre raw ingredient is from local farmer. Uh, Mosey Farm is spinach, 
and uh, we get um, the uh, rodent ranch, uh, our walnut from farmer market from Mount Mountain View or Castro. They come to Castro sometime. Our almond and walnut from them and lemon juice. So from local farmer and local people. And we don't put, it's a very simple bread. We don't put a chemical whatsoever. And um, it's great. And our sauces, you can cook with it. And the bolani, you can serve it anyway. You can serve it as a lunch, dinner, or appetizer. So, oh, I can use that. She's what? Marissa, you're muted if you're saying something. Shoot. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, Nazi. Uh, oh, at no this problem. point, uh, I can hear you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'd like to open it up to questions from the students. Does anyone have any questions for Nazi? Ah. Which is your favorite bread to make? Oh, which uh, my favorite bread is uh, the spinach one. The spinach, it's uh, the spinach, a leek, a green onion, cilantro, all green vegetable inside. And that's the most popular one. Uh, do you also make hummus? Yes, uh, we do hummus and uh, uh, that uh, recipe is my mother-in-law's recipe. And we make hummus with fresh tahini. We make hummus with no chemical. Uh, we make it very simple ingredient in hummus. And it's uh, the top seller. Um, we do, yes. Excuse me. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, about your facility in Concord? You guys produce your bread in Concord? Yes, we produce our bread here, a small little facility we have. Uh, we make uh, all, um, it's um, local in Concord. It's very close to you guys, uh, like the other side of the street on uh, um, Cheryl Court, Cheryl Court uh, off of Bait on Pacific Coast is that side, we're on this side. It's a small little place and um, uh, we have, uh, it's, um, it's me, all my family, my husband, me, and uh, my uh, four boys working in the facility. Uh, we all work and uh, we make the product. I come here early in the morning and I work till late at night. In the start of the business, when I started, I work uh, from five o'clock, my life start from five o'clock in the morning till 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> but I'm a little bit better now. <laughs> After I got a little sick, my kids pulled me out. So I'm not doing what I used to do uh, 15, 16 years ago. Oh, wow. So you are very much a family business. Yes, yes, we um, are. A question from Kevin. What are the pros and cons of selling at the farmer's market? Uh, pro and con is um, we love to sell in farmer market and farmer market is um, great product. It's our own store. Like we, um, we sell it for ourselves. And uh, we don't give it to uh, somebody else, to a retailer that they put profit and they sell it. So we like to, that's a good thing. And also we want to be in local and farmers and uh, deal with people. And all my kids go, I used to go to farmer market myself. But like I said, after I got that, wasn't that my health a little bit issue. And then I stopped going to the farmer market. So my kids goes there and they love going to the farmer market because they see people, they meet people, and um, they talk to them. So we love to do that. And um, con is um, uh, sometimes we set out and we can't give it enough product to people. Um, how has your business changed since COVID started? 
That's a good, great question. Uh, since COVID started, um, in the start of COVID, they stopped sampling because bologna bread and sauces is something you need to sample to people to see what it is because a lot of people, now a lot of people knows, but in the start, I was so worried when you guys, every farmer market stopped sampling. And I said, how am I gonna do that? But um, we have a lot of customer, a lot of our uh, support that are in the farmer market that um, didn't get so much bad. So we're doing okay. But that was an, and, and as uh, not just COVID in uh, January of 2020, my husband got lymphoma cancer. So 2020 wasn't a great year for us. <laughs> Uh, what do you love about your job? Okay, I uh, this is a question that um, uh, you, whatever you do, as uh, somebody else asked me in my lifetime, uh, why you're successful, why your stuff is so good. I said in your lifetime you have to do, you have to have three things: do whatever you do with love. You have to love it. And then the second thing, you have to believe in yourself and say, I can do it. And you're in front of a mountain and I said, I can climb. Maybe you fall and through climbing that, but since you told your brain you can do it, you will be successful. If you say, I can't do it, don't try because you already told your brain you can't do it. And then the second thing, you have to work hard. I have passion for baking and making and doing this. And um, that's why my kids wants me to stay away with the business because the stress is the business is sometimes is not good for me, but I love doing what I'm doing. Do we have any more questions for Nazi about her business guys? I have a question. Um, are all of your flavors for the sauces something that you find in Afghani cuisine or are those things that you came up with based on responses? No, no, it's, um, it's basically, uh, it's a mix. It's mix of, uh, it's not all Afghani. Bolani bread is Afghani, which I learned from my grandmother. And basically it's, um, Afghanistan is border of Russia and China. And, and those products came there. My grandmother came from Russia, and then I learned that bologna bread from her. And um, also the basil pesto, sunray tomato, and hummuses and yogurt is my mother-in-law's recipe too. So it's mix, mix of, um, it's not al Afghani, no. And also another thing, even about bologna bread, you cannot find, our recipe in Afghani restaurant. The reason because, uh, like I said, I learned this from my grandmother and uh, the bologna bread that we make, it's baked in a clay oven. The bologna bread that you find it in restaurant, they make it stir fry. And the recipes, they way change. The recipe is different. This is my grandmother recipe. And that's why I bring it. And that's why I have trademark for this product. Um, someone would like to know if you liked New York. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I love New York. I go every year to New York almost. Um, uh, my mother-in-law is still there and she comes back and forth. Uh, my family lives there. Um, but uh, I fall in love with California, the weather, the, the style of living in California uh, is different. All right, unless, uh, unless we have anything else, I would like to thank you and Shelly so much for being a part of this panel um, and everyone at Mount Diablo, all of, uh, all of the students and the teachers. Um, thank you so much for telling us a little bit more about your businesses. Thank uh, you.
these are uh, these are kids looking for different career pathways, and I think that you've kind of opened up this food and farmer uh, farmer avenue for them, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank like you I so said, much. No problem. I said, like you set your mind and you deserve it. America is land of opportunity. You can do it, but you have to believe in yourself that you can do it. Students, would you give everyone just a verbal, just unmute for a second and just say thank you. And if you feel comfortable, you can turn on your camera and give a little wave and say hi, just so they could see your faces and please do so. Thank you. 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 Great, thank you so much everybody. This was, uh, this was wonderful. Thank you and so uh, we will see you guys again on Thursday. Of thank course. you everybody. Great. Right. Thanks. Thank and thank you.